but you and me are giggling and laughing so hard. And, but everyone else is dead silent. So I don't know if they're actually enjoying the movie. I thought well, you and, walked out, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So at one point I walked <laughs> out and I didn't say anything to him, but I, I just had to laugh. Like yeah. I had to let my laugh out because we weren't, we were trying like, you know, when you're like holding in a laugh that you're not supposed to hold in or that you're holding in because you're not supposed to laugh in that moment. That was me. Welcome back, everybody, to Into the Geekverse, Episode 2. My name is Zach. And my name is Phil. And Phil today is my guest host on here. Now, me and him do host a other podcast called Hot Mike Gaming, which we mm. love doing, which is all about video games. It comes out in typically around the second, third week of the month. Uh, we've had, what, two episodes so far? Yes. And this month, we're going to have a couple episodes because of all the new video game announcements. Mm -hmm. So that'll be pretty cool. Cases, so watch out for that. Yeah, definitely exciting. But I wanted to bring in Phil onto this podcast. So we could have fun talking about something else. We're obviously going to talk a little bit about games, but Into the Geekverse is about celebrating everything Into the Geekverse mm -hmm. and as well getting to know my guests. So, Phil, thank you so much for joining me on this. And I, I just want to let the people know, who are you? What do you do in this industry? Do you want to do anything in this industry? I know, you know, this is your first foray into the internet of the world in terms of podcasting and everything, but is there something you want to do? Anything you want to plug? Anything you eventually want to see? Um, well, first off, I guess, hello, everyone. My name is Phil. Um, as far as what I would like to do in my future and just like the internet space is that I would love to just start my own channel and have my own discussions about gaming, putting up my own gaming videos and doing some live streams and just celebration of video games and just love gaming. So anything in particular, do you want to do like Twitch, YouTube? I want to do definitely want to set up a twitch and mm -hmm. want to at least stream consistently at least on some of my favorite games favorite you should games. you should you be i was watching him play escape from tarkov the day before we filmed this and uh it was very fun it was very fun to watch him i could never play it i would suck at the game <laughs> but it, 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 he's so tactical and he gets so into it and i love it because a lot of streamers try to be funny and stuff like that but like you're just like realistically funny if that mm -hmm. makes sense like you don't have to try to do any of that so Mm -hmm. I like that. Oh, well, you should you. do it. I've been thank telling you. you. You should yep. do this. So I will definitely do it soon. And once I do, I'll be sure to plug myself in. Good. Uh, other question. What is your favorite movie of all time? And be honest with me. Don't. Mm -hmm. don't you can tell the story about Serenity later. <laughs> yes. Um, I think my favorite movie, what really made me realize that I can love storytelling was growing up, I fell in love with Iron Giant. Great pick. Um is I know it's it's an animated film. Doesn't matter. Like, Animation is for everybody, Phil. Mm, like it, it was something about the story about this giant robot that was made to be a weapon, and realizing that there's more to life than being um, mm -hmm. what people tell you what you're designed for. Yeah, and it's about figuring out yourself and realizing that. You can figure out who you are by the people you put yourself around. And I think that's a great story, especially for kids. Mm -hmm. And you realize that through the main character, which I forget his name. Uh, Hugh? Hugh? Huey? Huey. 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 Yes. Yeah, something like you that. You learn that from Huey. And you see how this giant robotic thing, he ends up falling into almost like a parental role. Mm -hmm. and something that he's not in tune for himself yeah. as well and realizing how to grow up well that's an excellent pick uh the iron giant is in like my top 20 of all time i love that movie mm -hmm. it is such a special and incredible film uh the design of the robot was amazing is it incredible that the movie bombed at the box office it, it's sad it is sad it doesn't surprise me because it's not um it's I don't think it's a Disney movie. And, no, it's not. No, you know, like a lot of those Disney movies back then, they always had something iconic. And yeah, like, but this, but this for me was iconic in a lot of ways. Like mm -hmm. I remember seeing it. In, like I'm pretty sure I saw it in theaters. But I, I love this movie. I love how special it was. I love the animation of it. It's mm -hmm. one that you can go back and revisit at any point in time in your life. Um, Brad Bird directed it, who made The Incredibles. So, you know, he is uh, an incredible director. Yeah, um, that explains a lot. <laughs> and uh, I love what he did with Iron Giant. It is yeah. one of the most rewatchable movies ever made. And mm -hmm. I can rewatch it every day. So love that. All right. Up next, favorite TV series of all time. Favorite TV series. Oh, boy. That's a that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. Um really have to 
think on this. It one. can be animation. It can be anime. Yeah. It does not matter for for me. Like I'll 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 talk like I talked about it last episode. Um, uh, Breaking Bad's my favorite show of all time. Mm-hmm. So honestly, if I had to put money on it, just like even though I loved a lot of the children animations growing mm-hmm. up and everything and like TV shows and all that, yeah. as like a far series that I've watched like from start to kind of finish. I was, uh, I'm a big fan of the boys. A great I, series, man. Yeah, great like, series. I think that's just one that just hits it out of the park. Uh-huh. It's memorable. It's, uh, it's satirical commentary. Yeah. And like on social, superheroes, our yeah, world, all that social commentary on just like a lot of things is just kind of resonates. I, I like it. Plus how gory, mm-hmm. bloody, insane yeah, it super is. Super violent, super unhinged. Mm-hmm. I think is the word. I showed my mother-in-law this show because I like to corrupt people, right? Mm. So I said, you know what? She's this innocent lady, will not probably like this. I'm going to have her watch it with me. Mm. Uh, I don't remember what it was. She was having to stay at our house for uh, some reason. Like we were having something done and I was try- I was coming in and out of the house, but I like stayed for lunch. And I was like, oh, she, she was like, I want to watch something. I was like, oh, let's watch The Boys. So I showed her the first episode. Do it, bro. Everything with uh, translucent was mm-hmm. like hilarious. I love it. But she, you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. She told me afterwards, I would love to keep watching the show with you. She liked That's it that crazy. much. She liked it. She said it was interesting enough that made her want to watch it. And she's very picky. She hated Fallout, which like broke my heart because I thought she'd really like Fallout. Mm-hmm. My parents loved Fallout so much. So. I love hearing that, man. It's a great yeah. TV series you picked. Uh, you still haven't watched Gen V, which I told you you need to watch yeah, before the so. new season comes out. Um, you need to watch all that before we go to San Diego Comic-Con. So, mm-hmm. Which, for people who don't know, Phil always goes with me. But this year, he won't be my cameraman. He will be a, a co-host. We'll be doing a lot of San Diego Comic-Con coverage out there on the yeah. spot. So I'm super excited for the Comic-Con coverage. You get to see so much as mm-hmm. just like press and yeah you get to experience a lot of things and i understand why there's so much hype around it it's a it's a lot of fun it's a celebration of being a geek and i think like i went alone the first year i went and i had friends i went with shout out to sharonda from pay her weight she is amazing she officiated my wedding she she was my buddy there but the last few years you and me have been going and it's been a blast i love it like we're just in sync of what we want to do. Mm-hmm. And also like Phil's never the type to say like, no, I don't want to do that, which I love. Like he's willing to wait in line. He's willing to go bug security to figure out where we have to go, <laughs> where like my anxiety's like, oh, I don't want to be annoying, you know? So I love that. Last question to let the audience get to know you. What is your favorite video game of all time? One only, no franchise, one game. And basically the way I like to frame all these is like, if you could only watch one movie, one TV show, one video game, play one video game for the rest of your life, what would it be? I told you to think about this. Mm-hmm. I know. It, it's, um, I think ultimately, yeah. it it would have to go down to Fallout New Vegas. Really? If it, Sim- that, wow. Because, okay. Good like, pick. as far as like video games and everything, right? If I had to play this game for the rest of my life, multiplayer games are great and all that, mm-hmm. but not every day you want to play a multiplayer yeah game. but new vegas is like your comfort game yeah go back to whenever you it's want. a comfort game it's open world there's always like something else you could do mm-hmm. like if, it, if i could start a small guns build i could do a heavy guns build i could be a laser unarmed guy, unarmed i could just be a pacifist and not only that because the game gets so much community support mm-hmm. there's just endless i mean thousands of mods for the game i saw they added a multiplayer one recently which looks cool so so. it's like even if i don't like vanilla new vegas after a thousand hours i could switch up to something else and do a modded play or the survival you can play the survival which is a big thing so i love to hear that man new vegas is an incredible (laughs) game that i remember the first time i played it i i was okay on it like Mm -hmm. i I, like i liked it but I, i definitely still like three more i still do but then as I kind of got more into it, I was like, oh, this is like a huge, like Fallout's one of those games that like the more you, exp- like, it, fuck the story. If you just yeah. explore, there is so much you find in there. Mm-hmm. So I love that, man. That is our guest today, Phil Hall. And uh, as you guys know from last episode, now it's time to get into the geek verse time 
where we're going to talk about the month of June, what is coming out, what is releasing, what is going to be something that you can play. We're going to talk about, talk about movies, TV, and games once again. So starting with the movies, and I, I told uh, Phil, if he doesn't know what one of these films is, it's okay, man. Just yeah. uh, I'll be here to explain it to you. So the first movie coming out in June is Bad Boys for Ride or Die. Will Smith is back oh, in yeah. theaters. This is his second film after the infamous slap. <laughs> um, what was his first film? Uh, it was a small film called Emancipation. He was very good in it. It, oh, it yeah. was like uh, Anton Fuqua directed it. The guy made like Training Day and stuff like that. Very well made movie. I just um, I thought it was a little slow, so mm-hmm. it wasn't personally my cup of tea. But Will Smith was the best part of that. I've always liked Will Smith personally. I think he's a great actor. I love a lot of his movies. Mm-hmm. The slap, you know, a lot. Yeah. It turned a lot of people off. But he's back. It's been what three years at this point? Mm-hmm. Four years maybe. Are you a fan of Bad Boys? I remember being like five years old and watching it with like my brother. Uh huh. So I think I was just kind of too young to really. Yeah. Get Did everything. you ever see the third one, the newest one from 2020? No, I have not. So I've always liked Bad Boys. Um, mm-hmm. I liked the first one. I love the second one. And when they announced the third one, I said, uh, yeah. like Michael Bay's not coming back, which Michael Bay's, you know, was fucking around with Transformers for too long um (laughs) and then i went and saw the third one from these directors i'd never heard of and i fucking loved it it was the best bad boys film by a mile it was also one of my favorite films of 2020 which also a year that not a lot of movies came out but yeah it was also the highest grossing film of that year probably because covid but Mm -hmm. it was fucking awesome it was such a fun movie and then I was like, when it ended, I was like, I need the fourth one now, which is funny. The last one was called Bad Boys Forever, Forever. Mm-hmm. This one's called Bad Boys Ride or Die. This is Bad Boys Four. Mm-hmm. Feels like maybe they should have uh, yeah, flipped the titles, saying, but uh, yeah. I'm very excited for this. I think it's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that's about it. I, I hope this is kind of like lets people forgive Will Smith a little bit after yeah. the slap. I, I've seen the trailer for it. I mean, it looks, it looks fun. Yeah. yeah. It's so, definitely like a fun film. Yeah. And also, shout out to the directors. Um, they made the Bad Girl movie, which got infamously canned after it was final and finished and used as a tax write-off. So I really like to see that they're getting, you know, a comeback from oh, that. Because that's, that's not their fault that Warner Brothers was like, you know what? A lot of stuff got canned. Fuck your that. movie. Yeah. We're going to cut. Which... I know someone who saw it, and maybe I'll do like a whole podcast episode one day, maybe like more of his voice and have him talk about the film. Mm Because I I know someone who has seen that movie. He said it was okay. Hmm. Like he wasn't like blown away by it. But he said the biggest reason that he thinks it was canceled is because they were trying to recorrect the new DC universe and the direction that that film took was not the direction that I wanted to take anymore. Uh, And it was like literally like, it's like imagine if Marvel, so you know how Marvel plans out all this shit, right? Yeah. And it's like, say, back in the day when the first phase was happening, they introduced Thanos right at the f- end of the first Avengers film. Mm-hmm. And then let's say upcoming next, they wanted to make a Thanos-centric movie. Cool, right? Okay, mm-hmm. we'd probably tune into that. This is before Endgame, before Infinity War. Well, say, I don't know, something happens and people change out positions and then they're like, the new owner's like, you know what? Let's not go Thanos route anymore. But they already filmed the movie. Uh, so they just canned it, got rid of it. Wow. So it's, okay. it's kind of wild. It, I, it blows my mind. But also coming out the same week is this movie called The Watchers. This is actually directed by M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. Um, it's about a young artist who gets stranded in an extensive and immaculate forest in a Western Ireland where after finding shelter, she becomes trapped alongside three strangers stalked by mysterious creatures at night. Now, this is uh, stars Dakota Fanning, who I haven't seen in anything in forever. I have not watched the trailer for this. Have you? I actually seen the trailer for it. Does it look good? It. I, I could tell it's an M. Night Shyamalan film. Yeah. Um, Definitely by his daughter, you can tell that someone yeah, in the family made it. Yeah, I think it's it. just like he has like a certain editing style to like yeah. trailers where they keep things super mysterious. Yeah. And it definitely looks intriguing. Does it make you want to watch it? Intriguing. Um I think so. I, I think it it's interesting enough. Um, usually, whenever I do like movies like this, I'll watch it with like my brother. Yeah, brother, because he's such a big horror fan. Mm-hmm. So 
I wouldn't watch it by myself. Okay. I'm interested in it just because it's M. Night's daughter directing it. Um, she did a good job in a couple TV episodes of The Servant. I, I'm a fan of M. Night. I know he doesn't make always the best movies, but I'm still excited to see how he makes this, per se. Mm-hmm. Um, my only... I'm more like... Someone asked me the question the other day because M. Night has a film coming out in August called Trap that I'm like way more excited for. Mm-hmm. And I'd rather watch that. But maybe it's just because I haven't seen the trailer for this. I'm trying to watch too many trailers now, but The Watchers. Up next, this is that family-friendly one, uh, depending on who you are, uh, Inside Out 2. Ooh. Um, I loved the first one. Uh, it broke my fucking heart when Bing uh, Bong died. It's a hard, it's a hard watch. It, it's very hard. And this one is about Riley going into puberty and mm-hmm. what happens when there's new emotions such as envy embarrassment anxiety and boredom. then one that i boredom that boredom. but they used a weird word for it and yeah. and in why or something like that i am so excited for this i love pixar they are my favorite movie studio they made my favorite movie of all time phil are you excited for inside out too oh yeah definitely it's uh Pixar has a good track record of just like mm-hmm. kind of tugging on everyone's heartstrings, yeah. no matter what age you are. And it's definitely a film that is super relatable for anyone because going through such changes and puberty, figuring out who you are, it's all a big deal. Yeah. So no, I'm, I'm excited. I agree. Uh, I hope this is not return to form for Pixar because I've liked this last era of them. But I want it a return to form for the box office. Their last three films have bombed very mm-hmm. badly, which I think a lot of it is because Disney was dumb and started putting them on Disney Plus first. And then they're like, wait, wait, wait. Now we have them coming back to theaters. Mm-hmm. You taught all these families that they don't have to go to the theaters to see a new Pixar film. Yeah. I'm hoping Inside Out 2 starts to course correct that. Uh, Elemental last year was excellent. I don't know if you got to see that. but that I never got to see that. Very well done. You have they my Disney did, Plus uh, account now, so you have no excuse but to watch yeah. these things. They also did Soul, right? Loved Soul, yeah. Yeah. I Soul was that excellent. Either. That was amazing. You have homework to do, my friend. I know. So up next now, we have Kinds of Kindness. Uh, I don't even know how to explain this one to Phil because I know for a f- – I, well, actually, I don't know for a fact. I'm going to name some movies. You just tell me if you've seen them before or not, okay? okay. Have you seen The Lobster? It's okay if you haven't seen any no. of these. Have you seen uh, Killer, uh, Killer of the Sacred Deer? No. Have you seen uh, The Favorite? No. Have you seen Dogtooth? No. Have you seen Poor Things? Do you know what Poor Things is from last year with Emma Stone? Oh, no. Okay. That's fine. So, Kinds of Kindness is from the director Yorgos Lanthimos, who just infamously made uh, Poor Things, one of my favorite movies of last year. Uh, the best way I put it is is a fucked up version of a Disney princess film. Imagine if Cinderella got fucked and wanted to learn about sex and mm-hmm. other things. Um, it's kind of Frankensteinish and it's very unique. I loved, loved, loved Poor Things. I thought it was incredible. I thought Emma Stone delivered her best performance in there. And they're back working once again with Kinds of Kindness, which is an anthology movie. I do not like anthology movies. So this has already turned me off. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't like the trailer. But it's Yorgos Lanthimos directing this and writing this. And he is personally one of my favorite directors working right now. Every time he has made a movie, I fall in love with it or it's just like my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. It's just the anthology part that ruins it. You know what movie ruined it for me? Uh, was that Buster Scruggs film? Do you remember when we oh, went and saw that? Yeah. So it just felt like it went on forever. It it did, but mm-hmm. we do kind of have a bias because when we went to go see that, we saw we, two films. We saw two films, and so by the time they did a like first story of Buster Scruggs or whatever, uh, it was like we watched three movies. Yeah. So and it definitely it felt like a going. long day. Maybe if I rewatch it, I'd like it again. But yeah, kinds of kindness is the synopsis says it's about a man who seeks to break free from his predetermined path. A cop questions his wife's demeanor after her return from a supposed drowning. And a woman searches for an extraordinary individual prophesized to become a renowned spiritual guide. Now I'm excited. Like I like the synopsis. It intrigues me. Apparently, all these anthology stories connect with one another, but mm-hmm. um, it premiered at a Cannes Film Festival, got some good reviews. It has Emma Stone again, Jesse Plemons, Willem Dafoe, Margaret Qualley, Hong Chow. I mean, the cast is so stacked here yeah. that it's hard for me not to be excited for this. So count me in. Mm-hmm. Anyways, let's jump into the bike riders. The bike riders I've actually already seen. 
This movie is fucking great. That's with Tom Hardy, right? Tom Hardy, uh, Austin Butler, Jodie Comer, Norman Reedus is in it for a small little role. Mm-hmm. And it's a movie about based on a true biker gang that it shows the evolution of a biker gang, basically. Like, when they go from being in a motorcycle club all the way up to potentially an actual gang. Mm-hmm. And there's so much in it that I would like to talk about, but I think the little moments are the moments that made me fall in love with the film, so I don't want to spoil it because I, I saw it really, really early. But it premiered to film festivals last year. It was got good buzz. And a friend of the channel, Ren Geekness, said this. It is the coolest movie I saw in 2023. And I would say it is one of the coolest movies I've seen this year. Like, I loved being a part. It made me feel like I was a part of this gang. That's and cool. I loved the feeling of it. It's told like good fellas. It's mm. such a well-written film. There was one thing I didn't like about it, Phil. One oh. thing. What is that? I hated that it was only an hour and 55 minutes. It could have easily been two and a half hours. Oh, and wow. I would have been totally fine with it because the runtime flies by, but mm. I just wanted to keep hanging out with them. That's cool. Yeah. And Tom Hardy, man, <clears throat> so great to have a good performance from him. I, I love him in Venom. I have fun with him in other films, but I miss these dramatic chops from him. Yeah. So are you excited for this one? Does it sound intriguing to you? Yeah. it's uh, When I saw the trailer for it, it definitely looked really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get like a super good like Goodfellas vibe, but the storytelling is very Goodfellas. So. Yeah, I did see like the serious tone, mm-hmm. um, the very gangster vibes from it. So I'm I am excited for it. Sweet, that is a film I am excited for. Up next, we have on June 21st, Thelma. This is a very independent film. It premiered actually at the Phoenix Film Festival in Sundance. I didn't get to see it yet, but it is about a 93-year-old lady named Thelma Post who gets duped by a phone scammer pretending to be her grandson. She sets out on a treacherous quest across the city to reclaim what was taken from her. I heard this is so entertaining. It's like the comedy to watch uh, for June Again, I can only take the words from people. I love the concept. It looks yeah. fun. That's that, that's that about how like I'm at. That sounds like a fun film. Yeah. Like, I'll be watching it for yeah, sure. that definitely seems like a fun and a silly film. That is for sure. Awesome. Up next, we have Horizon Chapter 1. Now, this is... Do you know who Kevin Costner is, Phil? I know you're not big on names, but he's been in Dances with Wolves. He directed it. He starred in it. Uh, he's been in Yellowstone. He's a fantastic actor. He played uh, Kent, uh, Superman's father in Man of Steel. Oh, okay. So he infamously left Yellowstone uh, and some bad terms, basically, oh. to go and make this passion project. Oh, he wow. funded, I think, about 80% of the film by himself, and it's called Chapter 1 because Chapter 2 comes out in August. Then he has two more films he wants to make in this big line of things. Now... It premiered at Cannes, and currently right now it has like a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I do want to say that Cannes Film Festival is the most prestigious and most pickiest of film critics that get to go there. Yeah. So last year, Indiana Jones Dial Destiny premiered there and had like a 15% for a while, and I think it ended up topping out at like 65 Elemental premiered there to a, like a 10%, and then it ended up getting up to like a 77 or something like that. I'm probably way off in these numbers, but they definitely went fresh. Gotcha. I need everyone to calm the fuck down. It's 20%. Let's calm down. It's a new Western. It's a three-hour Western film. When the fuck do we get a Western film like that? That's That's cool to me. Um, My only thing is, is I wonder if it should have just been a TV show. Like, if every chapter is three hours, like, at that point, should we have just made... Like a miniseries? Yeah. You know, we don't really see many uh, miniseries kind of like Bed of Brothers anymore. No. And this would have been cool to see, like, a Western type Mm -hmm. of thing like that. So... Again, I don't know much more about it, but you got Kevin Costner doing a Western. I'm in. The three-hour runtime makes me roll my eyes a little bit, but I, yeah. I, I'm in for it. What about you? I think that's very interesting. I mean, like you said, we don't get very many Western films. Mm-mm. And since both of us being Arizona, it's like Cowboys is kind of our whole deal. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we you, don't you, really get much of that. Bro, so, you, I mean, I'll take it where I can. Yeah, you said it. You said it right, man. You said it right. All right, up next we have a big one, which is A Quiet Place, Day One. This is the prequel. I have not watched a trailer for this. I don't want to watch a trailer for it. I know it takes place in New York. I know it has Lupita Nyong'o, and I know it has Eddie from Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. That's all I care for. Looks, It sounds awesome. Have you seen the trailer? I've seen the trailer. It's definitely the the day one of... In New York. Yeah, Yeah. New York. And being in such a big... I, 
I definitely think it's probably taking more of an action turn mm-hmm. simply because there's so many people and New York is just loud, right? Yeah. So, like, how do these monsters handle a big city like that? How do they yeah. approach into this new world? and The first day. Yeah, the first day. And how did everyone just dies, it seems. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. I'm very excited for this. I've loved the last two. I thought the last two were phenomenal. Yeah. I thought the second one was even better. This one doesn't have John Krasinski directing it. He did help write it. That's the good. the big thing that I am very excited about for this movie is the director of this made a movie called Pig with Nicolas Cage. And that did you see it? I did not. I've seen the trailer. That before. movie is fucking phenomenal. Is like it, really? it was phenomenal. It's a little slow. It's John Wick without action. Mm-hmm. Someone takes his pig and it dials into like the underworld of restaurants and stuff like that and it's it was it was incredible. I I I thought it was gonna be a stupid movie because of you know the pig and Nicolas Cage, yeah, but like it, that's what I d- thought too. bro, I watched it and I was like, this is like Oscar level, like Academy stuff. Like it, it was incredible movie that I I really recommend. So I'm happy to see that he's doing a Quiet Place. I'm very curious to see how action centric this Quiet Place film actually is, or if that's more of the trailers, yeah. because Pig is a very slow movie and not known for the action. Also, fun fact, the guy who directed The Bike Riders was supposed to originally direct this movie, but he had dropped out to, to go do The Bike Riders. Oh. Last but not least, I want to talk about one streaming movie, one streaming movie coming out in June, and that is Hit Man. I've already seen this. It is in select theaters right now. Is that it, the one with... Glenn the Powell. No, 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 no. This one's Glenn Powell, and it's about a man who he... It's true a story about a goofy professor who works for the police department in his city and pretends to be a hitman and gets people to come in, give them the money and then they arrest them. Mm-hmm. But what happens when he meets a woman who's being abused, who actually may need an actual hitman? Uh. It is the best romantic comedy I have seen in a while. Uh. It is dark. It is awesome. It is funny, a little slow at the start, mm-hmm. but the 20 minutes is, uh, it's a little, um, the first 20 minutes could have been a little bit faster, in my opinion. Does this intrigue you to watch it? Do you know who Glenn Powell is? He was in Top Gun Maverick. Uh, he was in that Anyone But You film. I haven't seen Top Gun. Jesus Christ, <laughs> Phil. Well, this is a good spot for us to share, yeah. then. For people who don't know, uh, me, Ren, and Tyler, and all of us are going to start a determined date, but it's called Flicks and Friends, where we're going to have phil me tyler uh we're gonna watch films that maybe one of us has never seen before and give a reaction to so it'll be fun i'm gonna have fun on that one uh because he has never seen so many movies guys he hasn't seen all the harry potters he has not seen lord of the rings he's not seen fucking inception he told me this at oppenheimer it almost broke my fucking heart um there's a lot he's been missing guys so we're uh top so you've never seen either top gun Nope, never seen either Top Gun. Jesus Christ. All right. Anyways, let's jump into the TV series for the month of June. Uh, Coming up first is The Bear Season 3. I don't think you've watched The Bear. No, I heard good things, though. Uh, Incredible show. close friends have watched it, Mm -hmm. and they they give it good. It's an incredible show. I'd give it a 10 out of 10. I love it so far. Season 2 is even better than the last. The first season. right? Yeah, yeah, but it's like more of like the family dynamics as well and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, Season three, I can't wait for again. First two seasons were incredible. I imagine season three will be just as amazing. Up next, we have the Star Wars The Acolyte. This is the brand new Star Wars series coming to Disney+. Plus. I don't know how to feel about this one, Phil. Have you seen any trailers for The Acolyte? I think I've seen like the first trailer for it. Mm -hmm. Um, It didn't blow me away. Yeah. I saw, you know, it's funny though. We went to, I don't remember, we were at a movie theater and they were playing the trailer, like a new one. And it was the best thing. Oh, no, no, no. What we were doing, we were watching Hulu and the ad came on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, this looks really good. I'm a little bit more intrigued with it. A couple things holding me back from my anticipation. And let's talk about the positives because I'm a positive guy. I love the showrunner. The writer of this is the girl who did Poker Face, or not Poker Face, um, Russian Doll. The girl mm-hmm. from Poker Faces and Russian Doll. Russian Doll was an incredible Netflix series. So easily already excited because of the writing. Mm-hmm. Second, takes place 100 years before The Phantom Menace. So it's a full level of Jedi. And the Sith coming back. There's oh, someone that's... that's really cool. It's supposed to be a mystery about uh, a Sith person that is basically assassinating Jedi. 
Oh, wow. So there's a cool mystery to it. That intrigues me. My biggest issue with this series is they said each episode is about only 30 minutes long. Why? Why Why are we still doing this? In an era where you have streaming and you have Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon and Last of Us and all these different shows, Stranger Things, why are we fucking around with the 30-minute things? Now, again, I haven't seen the show. I could be wrong. I could mm-hmm. watch it and be like, okay, yeah, the 30 minutes works. But what was my biggest issue with Mandalorian? Eh, each episode's a little too short. Boba Fett. Uh, you, well, there's a lot of things wrong with both of that. <laughs> Even Ahsoka, as much as I love Ahsoka, I wish each episode was longer. Yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of the 30 minute format. Too, it feels like when you're waiting for those sweet episodes to finally come out and you start it. It's over before you realize it. Before it even gets into anything or anything of that nature. And same thing goes for Marvel, too. Marvel shows were the same issue. Like, some of them teeter the 40, 50 minutes, but, like, I don't understand why we keep fucking around with this. Either way, I'm excited for the Acolyte. High Republic era, I haven't been the biggest fan of, but there's a lot of intriguing stuff, and I'm hoping this is the first thing that makes me go, wow, I can't wait for more. They're planning, apparently, three seasons of this, so hopefully oh, wow. it gets supported. You got Carrie Ann Moss, who plays uh, Trinity from Matrix, playing a Jedi in here. Oh, that's cool. So, and then the main guy from Squid Game is also in this too. So oh. he's playing a Jedi. Very excited. Up next, we have House of the Dragons season two. You haven't watched Game of Thrones, have you? No. You haven't. You haven't watched House of the Dragons either. No. You fucking disappoint me. Either way, I the first season blew me away. I was very surprised, very skeptical of it going in, and it was incredible. Uh, it was one of my favorite shows of that year. I'm imagining season two will probably be the same way. I don't know much more about this, so I can't say anything else because I've stayed away from all the trailers, any news. I don't want to know. Yeah, I but I will. But I will jump into season four of The Boys. This is a oh, yes. big month for TV. Now to talk about The Boys for a second, we I do want to say that Phil's not watched Gen V yet, as we said off the top. Phil, you need to watch Gen V. Um, I'll try my best not to spoil stuff from there, but a couple characters show up in the trailer. The Boys season four looks phenomenal. Like, like top tier, and I, I, I can't wait. Gen V kind of got me back on board with the boys, though. Because season three, I thought the first three episodes were a little bit too much in terms of gore, gross out, shit like mm-hmm. that. That just, like, it didn't fit to the story. And I was, I thought it kind of got a slow churning of the story. Then once you get to um, Soldier Boy. Yeah. And he starts becoming a more prominent part. And then you bring in uh, Hero Gasm and all those episodes. Mm-hmm. That's where I found season three, found it's like Mark. And then you get me Gen V, which I rolled my eyes at Gen V too. I ended up binging the whole show in one day. Like oh. I was so into it. Like they sent me the screeners and I was like, oh, yeah. I was putting it off and then I was like, I need to watch it. One day, sat through and watched all eight or all seven because they didn't give us the finale. I had gotcha. to wait for the finale. Um, but it was, it was really good. This is your favorite show. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited. Um, after watching the first season, like I said, I, I love The Boys because of its social commentary mm-hmm. and everything. And where season three left off, it left off on such a like, oh, whoa kind of thing. Because now Ryan is becoming more influenced by Homelander. You kind of realize that Billy Butcher is losing his like... Not losing, I guess it would be influence over Ryan mm-hmm. and doing the right thing because he's being selfish. Yep. He's being an asshole. Yep. And he, a lot of like character flaws are starting to shine, shine the whole like season thing of like, he finally gets what he has been asking for was a way to kill Homelander. And then he turns it all away to try to save his son. Yeah. And so... I'm very interested in the dynamic, especially that now, like, Homelander is starting to get more free reign to be who he wants with all the people still backing him after that whole uh, murder, murder of that random dude. Yeah. You kind of realize, like, oh, he's going to start getting away with it. And it technically got away with it. Yeah, he did. In a way, so and forth. So, yeah, no, The Boys is going to be an interesting one i'm very curious because it also got renewed for season five already and mm-hmm. gen v already has a season two announced and they have a spinoff uh the boys mexico or something like that oh, it's really? the, yeah there's not a lot of details on that one yet um did you ever watch diabolical 
the uh, I couldn't get into it, but I know yeah. I know there's like stuff in there that's like technically canon. Yeah, I think all the episodes are technically canon. Mm-hmm. There's not much relation or like reference to the show. Mm-hmm. But then again, I think it came out after season three, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe so. one day I'll watch it. Yeah, one day, Phil. One day. One day. Just like all the films I missed. God, man. <laughs> Just like, but you've been too busy playing video games. So let's yeah. jump in talking about video games releasing for the month of June. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is this isn't an actual video game, but it's Elden Ring: Shadow of the Erd Tree. Mm-hmm. This is the DLC that's been highly, highly excited for by many fans of Elden Ring uh the kind of a little bit of background context talk about your Elden Ring journey I know you haven't beaten the game but yeah I, I've which, sunk like 200 hours into it though let me get everyone into this right now this motherfucker has sunk 200 hours in the Elden Ring has not beaten it he never beats games and it bugs the shit out of me so we're actually going to start a thing on our other video game uh our on our video game podcast so look out to that but Mm -hmm. um 200 hours but you loved it right yeah it's definitely a lot of uh fun i think the last time i played it was like i was farming little dudes who the frog not the frog but they're like little guys who would uh hide in bushes and they'll jump you they have yeah. like giant helmets yeah yeah that would like scone out and they had like really cool weapons oh, okay so like i farmed them for that and what level are you do you remember I think i'm like level 100 or something like that how you the mean? fuck have you put 200 hours in that game and you're only level 100 i don't remember what level i am dude i'll, I'll tell you right now i'm 238 at 88 hours oh so i'm probably way higher there yeah i was about to say there's no fucking way Bro, you should be able to beat that game. Like, no issues right now. Oh. I just killed... Do you know Radon, the big the big dude on the horse? Yeah. I killed him in three hits on, like, a new game plus of, like, five. Oh, wow, that's fine. Yeah, there's no I fucking think way. the last boss that I fought was the one where there's, like, a giant fountain. They ride a horse. It's, like, a spectral horse. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's that like one's... time. Yeah, that I'm one's... Guessing, uh, uh, did you kill the Godskin duo? I don't think so. Oh my god, dude! You're not even that. F- Did you get to like the Colosseum area? Like maybe. I haven't fought the boss where you um, call in all your companions either. That's Radon. Oh, okay. That's Radon. Yeah. So I haven't fought him. How do you have 200 hours? I just explore the world. It's fun. Yeah, but like, where are you exploring? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I had to like the next time I'm that. over. Can you load up Elden? I'm just curious to see like storylines, like yeah. where you are. I'm pretty sure I have clocked in like 200 hours. That's insane to me. Close. Anyways, the new Shadow of the Earth Tree is coming out. Uh, I don't know much about the story or the mythology or the lore of Elden Ring, but I he put 200, I put 88. I love this game. It was one of my favorites of the year. It came in second, I think, for me. I think I had God of War at number mm-hmm. one that year. Um, but I just got back into it, and I actually wasn't planning to get back into it. Uh, I was actually kind of against the DLC because I've, I heard that you know you gotta you gotta kill Morag again, you gotta kill Radon again, and I kind of rolled my eyes at the whole thought of it. I was just like, I don't. I wish you could just like start the DLC with your character, but you know, in typical from software nature, yeah, they're not gonna be nice about that. So I found out how to get to them and. You know, I was like, you know what? Let me just boot up my save. I want to play it. I want to be like everybody else. And I booted it up. And I'm like, oh, I'm actually pretty far on my new game. I think, what did I say? Five? I yeah. Think it said you five. said you were like right outside of Radon or something. Yeah, so I just hit. killed Radon. And then I, where I booted back up, I was a farming where Morag is and that the whole underground blood. You probably have no idea. What the, you probably no. have no idea who Morag is. Anyways, killed Morag. And now I'm just saved right outside the entrance for the DLC, which mm-hmm. is right there it's like this giant cocoon with a hand sticking out i think it's melina's brother or something gotcha. like that again you're talking to someone who doesn't know the lore shadow of the earth tree looks cool the trailer looked cool i'm about it more elden ring the last yeah. of the dlc count me in uh, mm-hmm. please make bloodborne too though that's what i would rather have as you can and remaster see bloodborne me. and put it on uh pc and ps5 please uh, yeah, you know i don't want it going on pc because then like that gives you more of a leg up to not play your playstation mm. sorry phil that's fair <laughs> up next we also have destiny 2 the final shape another add-on um that's it's so f- huh i have a lot of friends excited for this deal same um 
I'm not big. It's into, the final one. Yeah. This is the final thing for Destiny yeah. Two. I, I'm not big into Destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, though, since this is the last DLC, a lot of them have been saying this is kind of like the magnum opus where you can combine subclasses. I think that's how it works. So I they, I think yeah. pretty much you. Re it's like a subclass that lets you pick two subclasses, mm -hmm. and it lets you just completely break the power scale. Essentially, that's. That's what I'm hearing from it, or that's how they're throwing it at me. Mm -hmm. They're like, that's they're trying to rope me in to play it. So um, it seems very interesting. I'm sure a lot of Destiny 2 players are going to be happy about it. I know that they, they're they pretty good about like when they end the game, they'll let you just kind of have the most fun you can. Yeah, I mean... I, so like destiny i've had like a love-hate relationship with and i know like you've kind of talked about it how like a lot of the fans got fucked like they just you buy these add-ons and you actually can't like play like a majority of them or like the story yeah um and i i stopped playing for probably a year or two and then my friend our other host uh tyler he was like told me he's like you gotta hop on this and so i hopped on witch queen and i I think that year I put 160 hours into Destiny, which is like a lot of time. Hey. I I don't have time to play like one consistent game, but it was the yeah. one I kept going back to that whole year. Loved it. Super excited for the next add-on, which was like, I don't even, Lightfall, something like that. And I mm. fucking hated it. It was awful. It was so bad. Um, it killed any excitement I had for yeah, the, the final that. shape. Lightfall, I think, on Steam it, it was, was like really bad. Mostly negative. Yeah, it was not a good add on. Yeah. The the story was haphazard. Uh the new uh thing you got, like the new I don't remember what the fuck they're called, power, whatever. Yeah. It was cool, but it just didn't grab my attention. Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So this final shape, I the trailer looks so awesome. The poster looks awesome. Mm -hmm. I just I can't trust Bungie. I, I, I legitimately cannot trust them on this game. Now, if they announce a Destiny 3, which I know they're making. Yeah, there's no way. I, I might be a little bit more excited to, like, jump into Destiny 3 because it'll be a reset for most people. Mm -hmm. Unless tomorrow they announce, like, yeah, anything you earn, the final shape gets to go over. Okay, maybe that makes me want to jump back in. Yeah. But knowing that we're getting into another one in, what, three years or so probably, mm -hmm. I just don't care. No, I think this is just kind of like a... Hoorah for... Hoorah. Everyone. Yeah. Hoorah. Everyone playing and just be like, all right, you guys stuck with us. Give us the extra, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the 30, 40 that they sell them at. Yep. Here's your power fantasy. Yeah. You could do all have the fun. content. You could do all the content that we have available. Yeah. Available if you beat this. That's how I kind of see it as the max. Fair enough. level is probably going to be like 1950 or probably. something like that. So. So. Anyways, after that, we have one more video game releasing that is clear, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, Are you excited yes. for this? I've seen the trailer for it. Are it's, you? I'm not yeah. I'm not huge on the asymmetrical stuff, but... Yeah, a lot of those asymmetrical games, sadly, they fall flat on their face. Um, you can kind of look at Ash versus the Evil Dead. Oh, God, that, army, that Evil Dead game. It was a cool concept. It just fucking died. Yeah, it was super cool, and I was, um, I was uh, very unfortunate enough to miss the... Because, like, Epic Games, they do, like, a free game every month. Yeah. It was, like, the free game mm -hmm. for one of the months, and I missed out on it, so I never got to try it. But, like, I'm pretty sure everyone who still plays it, the whole 20 people, are probably, like, super geared out, and yeah. it's probably impossible to play. Yeah, I have that game. Uh, I felt geared out the first fucking week. Mm, like, yeah. if you didn't play every day, I just felt... Also, it just sucked because no one ever worked together. So, But the, I will give... Texas Chainsaw Massacre was fun. I don't know if you got to play it. That game was actually really fun, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping Killer Clowns is the same. The combat looks cool. Gameplay yeah. looks cool. I don't think I've ever finished the original movie. No, it's super silly. Um, so, I'm excited. I'm it's excited. one of those, like, Chucky films or, like, The oh. Leprechaun. Hey, I'm for those. Leprechaun, yeah. we should get Killer Clowns, go to the hood. <laughs> right? They had the Leprechaun, so now we need Killer Clowns from outer oh, space yes, going to the right. hood. So... All right. Well, let us know if you guys played it. Anyways, to end this all off, I like to ask our guest one major question, and I'm going to ask him two questions. One of those things is, Phil, out of the, all the video games that you're playing right now, or any that you want, 
what is one that you would recommend that anyone should go and play right now to enjoy for the story, to enjoy for the comfort of things? It can be an independent game. It could be something small. It could be huge. What's one game that you would recommend to people right now? I asked you this question, so you better have a fucking answer right now. <laughs> I'm going to fight you. <laughs> no, um, a lot of the games that I really recommend are kind of old. Um, That's okay. with the new trend, I recommend just Fallout to anyone. Which one? I think... If you had to play them to get um, into Fallout, which one if would you, you were, recommend? If you were new, I would recommend Four. Okay, because it's super simple. Uh, new Vegas is very RPG heavy. If you're not big into those kind of things, um, indie games, I recommend. Buckshot. If you're, <laughs> Buckshot Roulette is actually a lot of fun. That's yeah. a super simple kind of bit RNG based. You had me play that one. Roulette, Russian roulette kind yeah. of game. Um, I recommend, like, if you're super into tactical games, I recommend Ready or Not. It's um, tactical. If you ever played the 90s SWAT games, mm -hmm. you play as, like, a SWAT officer. Cool. And it's kind of like you push around and you have to arrest people. You have to be smart mm -hmm. about stuff. It's a lot of fun. Cool. All right. Last question, since I'm all about movies. If you were to recommend one movie or TV show right now for anyone to watch, it could be in theaters, could be old, could be new, what would you want them to go watch? Can't be Iron Giant, though. I know. It can't be Iron Giant. Um, I would recommend the... You can say Serenity. <laughs> Serenity. No, I'm being serious. Oh, yeah, you can no. say it. Serenity, no. Serenity is a topic of its own. I don't actually... I don't think I could ever recommend a movie like that to I, anyone. I could. You could? Yes. Tell the story. Tell the story from your perspective. So uh, let me, I'll fold it out. So when I, <laughs> there's this movie, what year did it come out? Um, this is not the 2005 one that's based off Firefly. This is the 2019 Serenity with Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway. Now, I got a screening for this movie and I texted Phil. I was like, hey, would you like to go with me? The movie might suck. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm down for anything. Now, this man does not watch trailers most of the time. Yeah. So he didn't know what it was about. I didn't know what it was about. We go to watch it. It was the best experience ever. Uh, Phil, you can say why. Yeah. So um, the movie starts off very weird. You you get Don't give away the twist, though. Oh, okay. You got to be very careful. Don't oh, give man. away the twist. How do I even explain it then? Just explain. like You can it's, explain, but just don't say what the yeah, twist is. You, you just realize that... As you're watching Matthew McConaughey, his main character, go around and interact in this world, you realize that a lot of these people act very strange. One note. One note. Same lines. Yeah. It's, they kind of like. It's like he's in purgatory, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's very weird. You wonder why these people behave the way that they do. They kind of just do the same thing again. Kinda why does like, he be behave the way he does? Yeah. And, um,. It's it's kind of advertised as like a mystery noir kind of film because the the wife whatever comes in and has like her husband come along. Yeah, He's, the wife and Matthew McConaughey were uh, they divorced. divorced? Yeah, yeah. No. And you kind of realize that like the new husband is like an asshole. Yeah. So you kind of figure out why did the wife go to this island yeah. where. Matthew McConaughey moved to, yeah. to, to and basically to seemingly get away from yeah, and she everything. wants Matthew McConaughey to kill her now husband yeah and I mean, insanity ensues uh, you see Matthew McConaughey like just so you know the movie that you're watching you see them have sex at one point and he yells I win yeah it is as he pulls out and it is the funniest thing I've ever watched so me and Phil are watching this and Phil is one of the most behaved people you could watch a movie with, for the most part. Like, you know when we go to press screens, you got to be a little bit more serious. you got to be quiet, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I try my best, but you and me are giggling and laughing so hard. But everyone else is dead silent, so I don't know if they're actually enjoying the movie. I thought and, you walked out, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at one point I walked out, and I didn't say anything to him, but I, I just had to laugh. Like, yeah. I had to let my laugh out because we weren't – we were trying – like – you know when you're like holding in a laugh that you're not supposed to hold in or that you're holding in because you're not supposed to laugh in that moment? That was me. And I walk back in and sit down and we're watching the movie and we, we leave the screener. And every time you leave a, an early screening, the, the, the reps want to know, oh, what do you think of the movie? And I walked down and I said a couple words. 
that was a fucking movie. And I laughed and walked off. I had <laughs> nothing else to say. It is a great experience. Is that going to be the movie you want to recommend? You Just for what? people to get friends together. Yeah, I think it's definitely take your friends to mm -hmm. and like, it's funny. Yeah. It's fun. Um, obviously, we won't give away the twist. It's a mystery in your film. Um, yeah, I just didn't expect it to take itself so seriously in the way that it did. It's so fun. And so when that scene came up, everyone's taking this film super serious because it was advertised to be oh, a serious Oh, and we film. weren't. At this point, we were done. Yeah, we At were this like, point, it was just funny. This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love it. Other than that, guys, that is the end of the Geek First episode two. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Phil, for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's so great to be on here. Yeah, of always. course, man. So this will premiere this week, and then Hot Mic Gaming will premiere the following week. Please go check it out. And, of course, until next time, stay classy and keep watching movies. <laughs>